Hello, Dr. Naraniki here from the Middle East Institute at Christian Heritage College. In this video, I'd like to explore some of the structural features of Virginia Woolf's uh, A Room of One's Own. Uh, basically, the this text can be a bit difficult to get into for some people because uh, the form of it is is not coherent or consistent in a way that um, we often like to expect of our texts. Uh, particular, this is like, well owing to well uh, Wolf's uh, modernism and 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 her the the way mo modernism. Uh, really broke down the uh, normative uh, literary conventions that of the 18th century that preceded this period. Um, so we'll see this also with T.S. Eliot, so the rejection of narrative, moralizing, sort of a noble style um, of the Victorian uh, era literature. Um, and, and, and even, I mean, so one of the things that's characteristic of uh, Virginia Woolf's uh, A Room of One's Own is, is a distinctly modernist way in which a meta-level criticism of the genre appears within the genre itself. Okay, so, so in that sense, you, you'll see things like uh, a literary essay, which this, this ultimately is it's a lecture it's an essay um, in which criticism of of that genre essay appears throughout and the genre of uh, of, of a lecture appears throughout this text uh, and even the breaking down of the lecture uh, into part into something that's not quite a lecture and not quite a, a narrative fiction but somewhere in between is part of this contesting or breaking down the barriers or the con conventions of uh, what constitutes an essay, what constitutes a lecture, what constitutes a novella, a short story, a narrative fiction. All of these things being established by kind of a you know, sort of a, a patriarchal sort of uh, literary culture um, that Virginia Woolf is, 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 is seeking to contest. So she's being very radical here and she's radical um, very radical and subtle ways and her, so it's not only her ideas of the time that were radical her feminist ideas uh, but her approach to text and the way she uh, she she broke down the conventions and the norms of uh, of, of of writing uh, itself uh, of, of essay writing of short story writing um, so this was a very radical act. So she's breaking down not only social norms, but literary norms as well. And this was a very modernist thing. So uh, you can say it's 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 a, a self-reflexive turn, where uh, the 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 genre turns in on itself, and we see this as a distinct feature of modernism, not only in literature. We see this in, in all areas of, 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 of human creative activity. We see this in in art, with 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 minimalism, um, particularly in music and in painting, uh, where 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 the where experimenting with with the the genre and what is permissible, how far can we expand or contract the the parameters of that genre such that it's no it can you know such that it, it can no longer even be recognized as belonging to to that genre at all um is, is part of the, the the modernist uh uh move uh saying music uh experimentation with atonal uh music uh with with gaps and silences to what extent is a lengthy silence part of a musical composition? In painting, to what extent is a completely white canvas or completely black canvas still a painting? What happens when you get rid of the canvas altogether? Um, 
And in, in, in the sciences too, we see that move. We see a, a, a turn towards meta-level concerns uh, uh, in, in science. We see physics, and then we see physicists doing philosophy of physics. Um, and uh, meta-level speculations about it. We see that in logic. We see that with Alfred Tarski's work on, on, uh, on formal languages and meta-languages. So that meta-level, and uh, 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 that kind of having the uh, object language and the meta-level meta language sort of uh, operational in a, in a whole, in a, in a system. And we see something like that going on here, that we, we have the almost the 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 uh, the object sort of narrative story biographical semi-fictional story that is also a a lecture being they can imagine her giving to an audience um, and then you have a kind of meta level um, criticism of all these conventions that she's engaging with popping up throughout the, the story so she, there'll be a scene in which her the where, where she is presenting herself as as a character it could be i mean uh, she's even contesting the idea of uh of you know first person or third person or autobiography um you know when she says uh Call me Mary Betton, Mary Seton, Mary Carmichael, or by any other name you please. So, uh, so she she she's even uh, not specifying the 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 position whether it's it's autobiography, to what extent it's autobiographical, to what extent it's it's fictional, and doesn't really matter. Um, and she even mentions, in, in, and then she mentions throughout the, well, in this text that um, in, in fiction often that's where you find the truth. So in that sense, it doesn't really matter whether to what extent it is a, a literal sort of uh, re rehashing of an uh, event she found herself in or whether she is, is just sort of making up this fiction um, to, to present a, a, a particular truth of an argument. Um, and so she's she's supposed to su supposed to be living and delivering a le a lecture a talk turns out to be more of a a, a narrative story um, semi fictional semi autobiographical um, and I mean uh, and in sp interspersed within it is a, a meta level criticism for example on on on. Uh, on pretty much on chapter one on the first page, uh, quote, I should never be able to fulfill what is I understand the first duty of a lecturer to hang, to, to hand, uh, to hand you after an hour's discourse a nugget of pure truth to wrap up between the pages of your notebooks and keep on the mantelpiece forever. Um, so. So see, she is criticizing the convention of, of a public of a lecture here. So she's not going to spell out exactly what she wants us to take all, away. She wants us to to do a lot of the the work to work with to work with her in in a kind of a in, in coming to a realization of 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 what she wants us to take away. She's not going to spell it out for us. We have to do a lot. We have to do a lot of the legwork ourselves. And this is also a distinct feature of, of modernism. It's it's not it's it's not a, a, a it's it involving the reader, drawing the reader in, and making the reader be active in 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 the uh, in in almost a shared meaning creation uh, of, of the text. Um, sure, she has an argument that she's putting forward. But she's not going to spell it out. She wants the the reader to do to do some work in 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 following the you know the the, the sequences of, of of her you know of of you know the following following the sequences to the the conclusions that she is also drawing to make to make the reader feel like they've 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 come to the conclusions themselves without her, without her spelling it out. 
Um, so we see this. We see we see the the mode change quite a bit. Uh, uh, the register uh, sometimes from a high sort of. Uh, uh, it, it switches between a a, a so poet poetic register sometimes a a a, a, a a very formal sort of you know flowery sort of language register to to then more more colloquial um, uh, register in which which is sort of a, a I mean parody and, and, and sarcasm and, and wit. There's a lot of wit throughout this humor um, kind of uh, intersp intersperse. Uh, uh, so we can see uh, she mentions that uh, she's a po opposed to the, the, the affected but the affected but, but the affectation of the style uh, which is with its imitation of the 18th century. So she's kind of um, critical of that sort of, uh, of uh, earlier sort of uh, uh, formal formal style of uh, uh, I mean before modern before modernism uh, the the trend in 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 poetry and literature was for high high formalism uh, emulating. Uh, Greek and Latin wherever possible. Even the English language transformed to become more Latinate, uh, uh, to in, in, to sort of emulate a, a Latin grammatical structure in in speaking, uh, and we we have a bit of a leg, a, a bit of a hangover of that still. Um, the idea that you shouldn't end a sentence with a preposition. Um, why not? I mean, th these were kind of is is this the way that English language traditionally operated. No, it's uh, this sort of artificial artifices and formalities and structures that were brought into the arts and, and learning uh, in, in, in the Victorian period. Um, so, uh, and we see this in, in painting as well from a kind of a, a, a movement from, from, from a classicism and, and a kind of realism to 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 the impressionism, uh, so there is something uh, impressionistic uh, at times about not, uh, about the way she's uh, playing with the structure of of her prose here. There's no the, the overall coherency is repeatedly disrupted. Um, And she even mentions, uh, say, here, however, I shall take the liberty to defy that convention. Uh, that she's talking about the convention of, oh, okay, okay, uh, let me uh, quote. It is, it is a curious fact that novelists have a way of making us believe that luncheon parties are invariably me uh, memorable for something very witty that was said, or for something very wise that was done. But they seldom spare a word for what was eaten. It is part of the novelist's convention not to mention the soup and salmon and, the, and, and ducklings, as if soup and salmon and ducklings were of no importance whatsoever, as if nobody ever smoked a cigar or drank a glass of wine. Here, however, I shall take the liber liberty to defy that convention and tell you what was on the, the lunch on this occasion. So, so she's contesting conventions, literary conventions here, uh, the, the noble, the noble style of literature where uh, you don't focus what, uh, on, on sort of mundane things, but the noble sentiments that were expressed in luncheon. No, she doesn't do that. She's very witty and she pokes fun of um, the, the, uh, the male scholars and their particular quirks of, of that, of their sort of, um, of, of, you know, the way they enter the, the dining room and, um, the whole room and, and sit down to eat. Uh, so she's, po she's poking, so she's poking, both poking fun at the, the masculine sort of patriarchal institution. Um, uh, it's at one level, um, 
through a witty sort of observation of these sort of funny hunched over scholars sitting down to to eat at another level she's she's poking well she's contesting the the literary conventions of how uh, we write about how well uh, how a luncheon or a meal was traditionally written about not paying attention to the well at least in England not paying attention to um, to mund little mundane uh, 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 scraps uh, so this sense she's closer to the she's she's closer to the Chekhov and and, and, and Gogol who who would who would find, pick out little little humorous observations um, in a way that kind of undermine seems to undermine the whole class or segment of society. Okay, so uh, there's an interesting section in, in uh, my version. Uh, well, what you can see when when you go through this text, we see in chapter one towards the end of chap chapter one, um, the 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 narration is interspersed with with poems from Tennyson. Uh, so so we see that kind of. Uh, Sort of, we we see sort of introduction of, of of a lot of poetry breaking up the flow of the text, and then we see she uh, her moving into a meta level literary analysis. So she's switching modes all the time, which can can be sort of a a bit sort of un, unsettling if you don't ex, you know if, if you're trying to if if you're expecting a kind of consistent narrative. So then she she uh, she writes. Well, so she she has a little bit of interlude of uh, of of, of uh, literary criticism, uh, as I've or, as I have already as I have said already that it was on an October day. I dare not uh, forfeit you uh, forfeit your respect and imperil the the fair name of fiction by changing the season, and describing lilacs hanging over garden walls. Crocuses, tulips, and other flowers of spring. Fiction must stick to facts, and the truer the fact, the better the fiction, so we are told. Therefore, it was still autumn, and the leaves were still yellow and falling, if anything, a little faster than before, because it was now evening, 7.23 to be precise, and, and a breeze, from the southwest to be exact, had risen. But for all that was... That was there was something odd at work so she's a meta level poking fun at uh literary con conventions of, of, of fiction writing within a fiction text itself uh, and then after that she introduces a poem my heart is like a singing bird whose nest is in a watered shoot my heart is like an apple tree whose burrs are bent with thick set fruit uh, so a poem by Christina Rossetti, and she's using this poem here, entering a poetic mode, to to juxtapose or contrast with the pres with the precise uh, the conventions of being precise precise and and and, and exact exact of 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 of, of a fiction of of a literary fic fiction. So. I think part of the part of this is to to yeah it's so 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 she is she is providing a criticism of of of, of realist fiction here uh, do we need to be so precise do we need to mention it seven seven twenty three exactly uh, and what and and what do all these details uh, uh, you know bring to uh, a particular scene can't we enter a more poetic mode? Uh, so she introduces a poem. And then after this, the passage that fo follows is a very flowery r sort of uh, uh, mode of writing. 
so then it so then she gets out she's no longer being sarcastic and being having a meta level uh, critical uh, approach but she's then writing very authentically perhaps the style of literary fiction uh, that she would want to see um, being written so a wind blew from what quarter I know not so not from the south southeast or whatever but it lifted the half grown leaves so that there was a flash of silver grain air it was the, the time between the lights when colors undergo the intensification and purples and golds burn in window panes like the beats of an excitable heart uh, when for some reason the beauty of the world reveals and yet soon perishes here. Oh, that's it's a wonderful, wonderful prose there. And then a bit further on. The beauty of the world which is so soon to perish has two edges, one of laughter, one of ang anguish, cutting the heart asunder. So we can see now uh, so literary, literary uh, passages of literary criticism introduced, broken up by a poem by Christina Rossetti, and then a kind of uh, a, a kind of prose uh, that is that that is of a, uh, of a kind of 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 the nature that uh, we we see something of. Uh, the fiction writer that she really is. So she's she's immersed in this particular uh, passage where she's saying something of of the beauty of the world and describing the world around her. Uh, so this is a very authentic, I think, a very authentic uh, passage. Uh, she's pointing out the kind of of literature that she would like to see. Um, Rather than a kind of literature that follows certain uh, follows certain uh, conventions that went before, uh, and then that's for, so that's a very serious register here. She's talking about the nature of the world, uh, the nature of the heart, and then she lo the register changes. There's almost a, a switch happening here, and she enters a very witty register. Where she, ref where she describes the dining scene. Uh, here was my soup. The dinner was being served in a great dining hall. Far from being spring, it was in fact an evening in October. Everyone was assembled in a dining hall, blah, blah, blah. Uh, keeps going. And uh, then she's just complaining about prunes. The, the prunes... And if, and if anyone complains that prunes, even when mitigated by custard, are an uncharitable vegetable, fruit they are not, stringy as a, as, as a miser's heart, and exuding, exuding a fluid such as might run in, in a miser's veins, who have denied themselves wine and warmth for 80 years, and yet not given to the poor, um, he should reflect that there are people whose charity embraces even the prune. So, uh, so there is so so then it, so the, the the mood the register switches from very serious to very witty, and then very insightful down the bottom, so that we were able to draw up to the fire and repair some of the damages of the day's living. Now, isn't that a nugget? I mean, she's telling us not to look for nuggets, but I think there's a lot of nuggets in, in, in Virginia Woolf. The idea that at the end of the day, we retire and rep repair some of the damages of the day's living. So the day, sometimes you just have a day that feels like one big damage. You, you know, you, you get a speeding ticket and then, you know, sort of, uh, or, or some sort of ticket. And then you think, why did I go to work all day? And then or every, the house is upside down whole day just seems to be a complete write-off and and most days often seem like that to be honest seems to be a, a damage so there is that there is a lot of switching between uh between prose between poetry and poetry between sort of a na narrative uh, uh, uh narrative fiction and then 
uh, inserted within that is a kind of a, a literary criticism. So there is that movement between, um, and then towards the end, it starts getting into a more of a essay style where she's presenting presenting a thesis, a thesis about creativity. Uh, so it's a, so there's a lot going on here. It's a very complex text. And there are footnotes as well. I mean, it's a it's it's a, it's, a, it's a very it's a very complex piece of work because it's not a, not cohering to any particular uh, genre convention of genre uh, uh, that that any any sort of conventional genre. She is she is playing with genres. Um, she is experimenting. There's something experimental about this work, which is very interesting, and that's what makes it a, a very much a modernist piece. That ex that that experimentation and contesting conventions is characteristic of this um, so thank you